Stay tuned for air gun detectives. Welcome to another episode of Air Gun Detectives. I'm your host, JC, and today we get to take the mystery out of the AEA Challenger series here. Yeah, they have this in 22, 25, 30, and 35. But before we get started, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button down in the corner. Won't cost you anything, it's absolutely free, but it really helps support the channel. Also, speaking of supporting the channel, check out my website, www.airgundetectives.com. On that site, I have hats, I've got t-shirts, I got my Generation 2 bipods, and for you gamo shooters that have the SAT or CAT trigger, I've got the trigger kits for you. It'll be the best 10 bucks you ever spend on your gamo rifle, I promise you. Also, check out my inventory, because I do throw some stuff on there, so that way I can get some new stuff in. Okay, this, we got this from the pellet shop. Been at the pellet shop. So I'll leave you guys a link down below, but if you're interested in the AEA products, he is the number one guy to go to. And I've had this for a while, I just haven't had a chance to review it. Anyway, this is what they call the AEA Challenger Standard 24. And the 24 simply stands for 24 inch barrel here. This is a PCP rifle. This has a 300cc non-regulated tank. Yes, 300cc. Again, 24 inch barrel, 45 inches overall, and this is a bolt action which can be decocked. It comes with two magazines. These are 10 round magazines in the 25 caliber. Uh, simple to load, you rotate it, put a pellet in backwards, stack the rest of them. But it actually comes with two magazines. This is a 3600 PSI fill or a 250 bar fill, however you want to uh, lay that out there. And they say you can shoot this from about 3600 PSI all the way down to about 2200 PSI, which is 150 bar. So you can go from 250 bar to 150 bar, but we'll test that. Um, they claim it'll shoot about 1000 feet per second with a 25 grain pellet, and we'll test that out as well. The rifle without the scope, because this doesn't come with a scope, so I had to put a scope on there, uh, weighs about 7 pounds, not overly heavy. Uh, you fill it right up here. Right in the front here, got a little fill probe, comes with a little fill probe, and you fill it right up here. The gauge is also in the front. The trigger on this is uh, non-adjustable, but it does have a manual safety on it, so it doesn't come on automatically each time you pull the bolt and cock it. It can be decocked. I didn't cover that. Um, it does have an integrated monitor here. This is shrouded barrel and then it's got the uh, the uh, monitor in here as far as um, the baffles go. Uh, 11 millimeter scope rail. Again, I had to put my own scope on this. And this does have the power wheel on it. It's got a transfer port adjustment. So you can play with that, you can reduce it. You know, people don't know, a transfer port can kind of be used like a regulator. If you set this and go, okay, I'm gonna sh I know I can shoot 10 shots with on the minimal, then I bump it up to maybe a uh, quarter of the way or halfway, and then shoot another 10 shots, they're all gonna be close to about the same velocity. So it's kind of like a manual uh, regulator in a sense. Now for this testing purposes, we're just gonna leave this full power the whole time and we're going to show you how it does with that. Anyway, let's go out and test this and then uh, we'll come back and uh, chat about it. So stay tuned for the next segment. Let's test our AEA Challenger over the crony. We'll see what type of velocity um, this does. All right, I'm going to show you guys the three top most accurate pellets. Start with the most accurate was the JTS dead center. We're going to go ahead and uh, shoot five shots over the crony. Average it out, show you what the foot-pounds of energy are, and then I'm going to show you the other two best-performing pellets. Okay, so, shot number one. 1121. Shot number two. 1113. Shot number three. 1102. Shot number four. 1095, and one more shot. 1086. All right, so you see the uh, velocity and the foot-pounds of energy with the uh, JTS dead centers. All right, that's pretty impressive. Now, the second best pellet 
was the Field Target Trophy, but these are a light pellet. These are a 20.06 grain pellet. Um, these averaged 1,222 feet per second, gave us 66 foot-pounds of energy. The only downfall on these, they're not good for the backyard because they break the sound barrier, and these are really loud. This has baffles in it, so if you're shooting pellets that don't break the sound barrier, you can shoot this in your backyard all day long. But these break the sound barrier, which are a little loud. And you guys often wonder how it does with slugs. So here's the slug hollow points. These are a 30 grain, it like the 30 grain, the heavy ones. And these averaged 990 feet per second and gave us about 65 foot pounds of energy. So you can see, depending on the pellets, you're gonna get somewhere between 65 and 70 foot pounds of energy. Pretty impressive. All right, so let's uh, move on to the next segment. All right, let's test our challenger as far as the pull weight goes on the trigger. Now this is a non-adjustable trigger. The way it comes is the way it is. It comes out of the box just like this. Not a bad trigger though. It's got a nice little break on it. So, but let's see what the actual weight is. I'm gonna guess, I'm gonna guess mm, between three and four pounds. Just guessing off the top of my head. Okay, we got a trusty lineman trigger gauge. Got it reset. Let's see how we do here. Okay, three pounds, two ounces, three pounds, two ounces. You know, that's a pretty doggone good trigger. It's a good hunting trigger, three pounds, two ounces. All right, let's go ahead and uh, move on to the next segment. All right, let's test out our challenger for some accuracy here. I'm gonna do something today. I'm gonna show you guys both how it does with the JTS Dead Centers, one of the most accurate pellets with this. By the way, this rifle is not very pellet picky at all. And then I'm gonna shoot Another five shots with the slugs. These are a 30 grain slug. I told you a little bit about these uh, during the chrono uh, as far as the weight goes. But uh, now I get to show you the actual performance. Another pellet that did terrific is the 20 grain H&N Barracuda. The problem is a 20 grain pellet in this rifle, it breaks the speed of sound. So it's like a little bit too loud for the backyard here. So we're just gonna go with the two, the uh, dead centers, and the uh, H&N slugs. And then we're gonna shoot the six inch, these are the HD targets, these are the six inch HD targets. So we're gonna aim dead center, we'll just see how it groups. We're a little over 40 yards, I think it's almost exactly 42 yards. Go ahead, uh, check that out real quick. And you can see we got two targets set up there. So the first target, we're gonna do the dead centers. Do five shots. Let's just see how well we group. All right. Shot number one. I mean, dead center for the red. All right. And shot number three. Let's keep this up. Shot number four. One more. Shot number five. Wow. <laughs> That's a great group. A great group. Okay, now we're going to do the slugs, the 30 grain slugs, the uh, HP slugs. Get this all loaded up here. There we go. All right. Shot number one. Shot number two. Shot number three. Shot number four. And let's get one more here. Shot number five. Okay, not too shabby. Both those targets are doggone good. I can tell you, they're all at least they're all in the uh, orange or red or what do you want to call it, and they're all at least touching. So we got pretty much just two ragged holes there. And again, I'll tell you the uh, the 20 grain H and N Barracudas, they're really accurate too, just a little too loud for the backyard. But anyway, there's your uh, accuracy on the Challenger. I'm telling you, this thing is actually really impressive. Oh, did you notice one thing? You notice there was no ping in this rifle. Go back if you didn't catch it, and check the ping during the chronograph. 
Anyway, I'm going to show you guys how you get rid of the pings in these rifles for less than two bucks. I'll show you that at the very end. But if you'll notice, there was absolutely no ping in this rifle at all. But stay tuned for the conclusion at the end, and I'll fill you in how you do that. Less than two bucks. All right, let's move on to the next segment. All right, let's do some plinking with the Challenger here. This thing is just such a pleasure to shoot. It really is. Um, you saw that we talked about in the accuracy there's three good pellets we're just going to use the JTS the dead centers these are nice and quiet in the backyard we really don't have much of a breeze so we're a usual this is our plinking distance we're um, about 40 yards here go ahead and check that out real quick see we got a little teeny shotgun shell on the far right and then we've got a chicken a couple eggs and a big ram so we're gonna start on the right side we're gonna work our way left and let's just see how well we do hopefully you guys will be able to feel this 65, 70 uh, foot-pounds of energy. All right, let's start with the shotgun shot. And it is a tack driver. It's unbelievable how accurate this rifle is. All right. Well, there's a chicken in front of the eggs. That's appropriate. And the little eggs. And another little egg. And let's do a headshot in the ramp. Oh, yeah, that thing does hit like a freaking mallet I'm telling you all right well there you go there's the uh, challenger in action doing a little plinking but uh, let's move on to the next segment we'll go ahead and wrap this up all right let's wrap this up with our conclusion well how do you think our AEA challenger did I think awesome full disclosure this is one of my favorite rifles to shoot it really is and the price point guys right around 350 bucks 350 bucks and again uh, ben at the pellet shop, he's a great guy, it's the best place to get these. I'll go ahead and leave you guys a link uh, down below. But like anything else, let's talk about the negatives. Okay, <clears throat> I'm very picky, as you guys know. So one of my negatives with this is, and I mentioned it in the accuracy contest, this had a ping. You know how some PCP uh, rifles will have a ping? It, it basically what it is, it's just a vibration in this tube. And uh, I don't like it. I don't like when you fire it, it gives it a little ding, ding. I don't like that. All right, so I'm going to tell you guys how to fix that. It costs you two bucks. You need to get yourself some tubing, um, just some very small diameter tubing. You're going to need about 18 inches of it, okay? Just keep that in mind. All right, <clears throat> you need to take the gun apart as far as very simple. Degas this thing. This does not have an official degasser. I like to just shoot it till the air is gone. Just keep pulling the bolt back and fire it, dry fire it, dry fire it till the air is gone. Other way they say you can pop the gauge loose. I don't like to do that. Just, just dry fire it until there's no air in it. Okay, once there's no air in it, gun safe, no magazine, nothing in the rifle. There's one bolt on the bottom and you'll realize that bolt because when this gun comes it comes shipped with the stock off it and one bolt puts the stock on it. there's nothing to it so you're going to take the stock off and then underneath there's going to be two bolts and you're going to loosen those two bolts up and you're, the reason you're loosening those up it's just going to take the pressure off of the uh, air cylinder and then <clears throat> you simply unscrew the air cylinder that's it air cylinder comes out and then the key is, drop this down a little bit, you're going to take your tubing and you're going to coil it like this. And you're going to push it in the tube. You're just going to coil it like this. Just keep it coiled. You want about 18 inches. That's all you need. 18 inches. Just keep coiling it and feeding it in the tube. It's real simple. Once you get it into the tube, then get yourself a wood dowel or something and you want to shove this tube about halfway down in this air tube. So this is gonna be from the back side. You're gonna want this tube to kind of be in this area right here. You don't want it too close to the valve. If it's too close to the valve here, uh, the, the hose could rest up against the intake and actually reduce your amount of air that's going in. So push that up so it's gonna be safe up in this area. 
Anyway, that's going to cost you about two bucks, okay? Once that's in there, you screw this back together, tighten it up just the way we took it apart, air it up, you're good to go, no more ping. That's it. It's that simple, two bucks. And that'll work on any PCP rifle, by the way. If you guys have an older one that's got that ping and you don't like it, that's an easy, easy, easy correction on that. So, like I said, for $2. You can't believe it. So you got one stock bolt, two interior, interior bolts to loosen up. You unscrew the air tank. You coil 18 inches of it. You push it in about halfway down. I like just a wood dowel, something real clean because you don't want to get any dirt in that cylinder and push it halfway down. That's it. Okay, let's get into the positives on this rifle. And I've got quite a few. The accuracy on this is absolutely incredible, as you guys saw. I mean, it really, really is. The quality, the wood stock on this, the fit and finish, outstanding. It really is. I also really like the trigger on it. It's not adjustable, but out of the box, it's right about two and a half pounds. It is the perfect hunting combination target shooting trigger, and it's got a really nice feel to it. It's very crisp and very predictable, and you don't find that in a whole lot of triggers, but this trigger is outstanding. And speaking of another thing, power in this thing. The power in this is absolutely amazing. You're going to get anywhere between 65 and 70 foot-pounds of energy. And I went ahead and charted this for you. So let's check out this chart and we'll go over it. All right, we use the JTS dead centers. Those are the 25.39 grain pellets. And we got about 40 shots out of it. And you can actually get that full 40 shots. It's going to kind of fall off the power curve a little bit, but still very accurate. Even at 40 shots, you're still shooting well over 800 feet per second. But the sweet spot, I charted the sweet spot. So on the 3600 PSI fill, you can shoot this thing down to about 2300 PSI. You're going to get 24 shots. You're going to average 1,080 feet per second. And that is going to give you an average of 66 foot-pounds of energy. Absolutely amazing. It really is. The, uh, the power and the accuracy of this is just, it, it literally, it's awesome. AEA did a really good job. And this gun's been around for a while, and they're still selling it, and there's a reason for that. This is one of those, it's kind of like a bulletproof. I mean, it's not overly complicated. It's good looking. It's solid. It really is. And again, I told you I like the trigger just right out of the box. But honest to God, this is probably one of the finest shooting non-regulated PCP rifles that you're going to find out there. And I challenge you, for the price point on this, 355 find another one that puts out 65 to 70 foot-pounds of energy for $350. bucks. you are not going to see that. This easily... Easily, I could give this five stars. I'm not going to, though, because of the ping irritates me just a little bit. So it's going to get four and three quarter stars. But then you put a little piece of tubing in there, gets rid of the ping, and then you're talking this is a five star rifle. But it really is. I mean, this is just like, I'll be honest with you guys, this is one of my favorite rifles to shoot. It really is. And I've got some nice ones. I got some nice regulated ones and, and what have you. But this one, for some reason, it is really, really fun to shoot. And the power out of it is simply amazing. Again, between 65 and 70 foot pounds of energy, just crazy. For the price point around 350 bucks, this one's going to be hard to beat. I'll be honest with you guys. This one's going to be really hard to beat. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Air Gun Detectives. Don't forget, this is where we take the mystery out of the air gun. So until next time, I hope you and your families are all doing well and you're getting plenty of shooting in. So take care and God bless.